we are in week 11 of inverse methods in heat transfer. In the last couple of videos, we discussed uh, a basic introduction to physics informed neural networks, also known as PINs. Uh, I had discussed various aspects of this. Uh, particularly, I had given you a sort of semi intuitive explanation in the previous video, but we did leave out a few things. I did not talk about how we apply specific boundary conditions, nor did we discuss how we solve inverse problems using pins, nor did we really talk about how we can incorporate additional data. So can we do with a mix of experimental data as well as existing, uh, neuro, existing uh, physics information? Can we combine all this? And uh, we will look at these three aspects within this video. Okay, so what we saw in the last couple of videos was given a PDE or an ODE. So let's take, we have an ODE of the form d square t dx square equal to, let me just make up something, sin x. Okay, so let's say this is an example ODE. I'm going to call this uh, to be of the form L of x equal to some R of x, some left-hand side of x is some right-hand side of x. Now, more precisely, L of x is an operator which is acting on t. And on the right-hand side, you have a function which could be a function of t or it could be a function of x. If you want to be even more precise, the reason I am doing it in three steps is when we write it this way, it can get confusing. So you could have a function of t dt dx d square t dx square and you have something on the right hand side let's call this some r of x now all put together you basically do not write it in the form some left hand side equal to some right hand side but you transform this to, to the form t square t dx square just like we did with newton's method something equal to zero okay so we will write this as d square t dx square minus sin x equal to 0 and more precisely from here and the equivalent form from here would be something like n of some t and x equal to 0. What this n means ultimately we want to talk about Navier-Stokes equations or some thermal equation but this is some operator an operator means there could be a derivative or the second order of the derivative like here, which acts on t and you have some terms that depend on x and at the end, this is equal to zero. So this should remind you of what we did with uh, Newton Raphson also. Okay. Um, now the question is, how do you transfer this equation, which is simply a PDE or a ODE into an optimization problem? Now, obviously, we already looked at a little bit of this in the last couple of videos. But before we move further, we know that in addition to this, we have some boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions could be, let's just say, t of 0 is 0 and t of 1 is, let's say, some value like 15. And let me change this also to some more identifiable value. Let's say it's 20 and right hand side is 15. And x belongs to the domain 0, 1. Okay. So this could be a slab, could be a temperature problem, or t could be any other variable. I'm just making up some ODE or PDE. Okay. Now what we know is all we do is we take this domain 0 to 1 and decide on getting some physics data. Okay. Now just imagine a parallel problem where you are doing some housing pipe prediction or something of that sort. Um, if we are doing some prediction of some engineering problem or we are trying to predict some stock price, we would sample it at a few points. Similarly, here we are sampling the physics at few points. Let's say we are sampling it at M points within the domain. And these M points could be, let's say, just for the sake of argument, let me just give some value, let's say 35 points just so that we have some unique number here. So m equal to 35 points, I'm sampling 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. up till 35. 
Now at these 35, these we will call the ODE or the physics points. Or if it's a PDE, we will call it the PDE points. Okay. So in these points serve only one purpose. We are going to take the physics data from here. And that's going to go into the loss function as J physics, or typically in the literature, we call it J PDE or J ODE or J differential equation. So let's just call it J PDE here. Okay, so just I'm going to call it J PDE, although this is actually an ordinary differential equation. So what's J PDE? J PDE is whatever you predicted. So here, obviously, um, just like we did before, we need a hypothesis function. And the hypothesis function is p hat, some function that we decide on minus sine of x at these points, whichever points we have, d squared and summed up. And if you wish, we can have a 1 by 2 factor or not, and 1 by 2 into the number of points. The summation is from i equal to 1 to the number of points. This denotes the total difference or square difference between our function p hat and the actual physics of the problem. So actual physics of the problem says this should be exactly 0, whereas our t hat, suppose I make up a function t hat is some function of w0 and w1, let's say w0 plus w1x. If I plug that in here, then I'll get d square d, dx square equal to 0 because it's a linear function that will get 0 and that will not match this. So you want to say that, okay, w0 plus w1x is not a great function. Now you might add something else, let's say w2 e power x plus w3 e power 2x plus w4 sine 2x, etc., etc. So you might try add all these other hypothesis functions. We plug all the all of those in here and just compare what d square t dx square does versus what it should do, which is d equal to sine x. So once we do that, we actually have our hypothesis function and we have our JPDE individually at this height. Okay. Now, of course, instead of t hat being this, T hat could also be a neural network. Okay, so it could be a neural network and that would also give some hypothesis function which depends on W. So it really doesn't matter what we use here. Okay, this is all fine, but there is no way that any T we choose like that will satisfy these two conditions. So just like we had a J PDE, we should have a J boundary condition. And if it is an initial value problem, we should have a J initial condition. I will show you how to do a J boundary condition right now. So J boundary condition is going to be, let's first take the left boundary. So the left boundary says that T at zero should be, I took some value 20. Okay. So of course, what you want is to say that T zero minus 20 equal to zero. So what we do is JBC from the left will be, you actually find out what T hat of zero is. So remember you have a hypothesis function, which is a neural network. This neural network would take in X. Let me call this an N and it will give out a t. So neural network simply is a substitute for what this function t is. Okay. So instead of saying t of x, I can say neural network, the value at x equal to 0, it will give a value. Of course, I give an input, it will give a value out. It should be 20, but I can't match this exactly. You know that neural networks will not in general match this exactly. So we will add a loss which is t hat 0 minus 20, the whole square. Okay. Now, similarly, you can have a JBC, which is at the right end. Our right boundary condition was that t of 1 equal to, I think it was 15. 
yes, T of 1 equal to 15. So I will simply say that JBC at the right is T hat at 1 minus 15 square. Okay, how does this help? We will basically say a simple thing. J total or J pin is J PDE plus J at the boundary conditions. So which comes to, if you see, 1 by 2 times however the number of points were, how many ever were the number of points. So let's say there were 35 points. So then M will be 35. Then we will simply sum up d square t hat dx square minus sin x the whole square plus t of t hat of 0 minus 20 square plus 1 by 2. You have a half everywhere. t hat at 1 minus 15 square. Okay. So this then, some people put an additional factor of 1 by 2 um, for just the left and right boundary conditions. This total loss is the pin loss. Okay. So the pin loss is made up of the PD loss and the boundary condition loss. What does this do? So when you try to minimize the pin loss, it will be ideally minimized when this is 0, this is 0, and this is 0. And the ideal minimization will be obviously d square p dx square equal to sin x at these 35 points and t at the left is exactly 20 and t at the right is exactly 15. Unfortunately, obviously in practice, ideally j total when minimized implies that bc and equation are satisfied exactly. But, but this minimum, but doesn't happen in practice. Okay. So typically you will have more problems than this. You will not be able to satisfy these exactly. That is because you will have more equations than unknowns. So, because we will have typically more data points compared to the number of parameters. So, this is an important thing to consider while doing pins. This doesn't get often discussed. The number of parameters and pins in the neural network that we use should be fewer than the number of points where we apply these conditions, uh, just so that it is effectively a, a least square solution that occurs. But even though this doesn't occur, we tend to get a least square solution, but a good solution. Now, this idea of adding JPD plus JBC was a particular contribution of the Raisi and Karniadakis 2019 paper. I'll shortly show it to you. There was another idea, which was by Lagares. This is the original idea from 1997. This idea was that J is just equal to JPD. But boundary conditions are imposed exactly. Now, how do we do that? There are various ways of doing it. Let me give you a simple example. The example would be something like you satisfy. Um, let me just show you. Suppose, I'm just giving a simple example. Suppose the BCs were T of 0 is 0 and T of 1 equal to 0. Then the Lagares approach is T hat equal to 
neural network of x multiplied by x into x minus 1. Now, how does this help? This helps in making the solution arbitrary so that you have number of parameters. So, all the parameters are here. This satisfies the boundary conditions. How so? When you put t of 1, you get x minus 1, so this will be 0. When you put t of 0, this is x equal to 0, then still it will be 0. Everywhere else, it does not have to be 0 and you will basically satisfy the parameters. So, you basically manipulate the expression for the neural network so that the boundary conditions are satisfied exactly. On the other hand, in the RISI approach, both PD, which is the physics, as well as the boundary conditions are satisfied in a least square sense. Now, the RISI approach has a few disadvantages. Of course, the boundary condition is not satisfied exactly and you need to play with certain parameters. I am not discussing that. Uh, here, maybe I will discuss it next week if time permits. But it has the major advantage that can be used to include experimental data in forward simulations. Turns out the same thing also helps in inverse simulations. Now, I will show how this is possible in a short while, but for now, I just would like you to remember the following things. The temperature or any variable we have is basically represented by a neural network. In the Lagarde's approach, we add some extra terms just so that the boundary condition is satisfied. Otherwise, we have a very simple and very beautiful form, which is there in the Raisi and Karniadakis form, which is you just add the PDE loss to the boundary condition loss and it just works uh, in practical problems so what i would like you to what i would like you to see now is some excerpts out of these two uh, seminal papers I, I will show you some of these uh, results from the papers and then we will come back and discuss some extra uh, important aspects of uh, these so i'll show you these in the next video